This meeting of the Rolling Meadows City Council is hereby called to order. Would everyone please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It was tight. Here we get you have a good party, here we go. The clerk will please call the roll. Cannon? Here. Prana? Here. Majikis? Here. Judd? Here. Banger? Here. Diestis? Present. Bean Boss? Oh, Bean Boss is not here. I think he's still expected. So he's, with he's his present be, he's at the moment. No. He's not going to be oh, he's not. No, he's yes, down in Missouri. He's, he's I'm sorry. Up. I forgot that. And he did say so. So that is correct. With six present this evening, there is still a quorum present. Therefore, members of the audience are reminded that these proceedings are being videotaped for current and future broadcast over the city's cable television channel. The first item on the agenda this evening is a motion to approve two sets of minutes, uh, the March 17th Committee of the Whole Meeting and the March 24th Council Meeting. The Chair asks unanimous consent to consider both sets of minutes in one motion. Is there any objection? Hearing none, then a, such a motion would be in order. Is there such a motion? Mr. Banger has made the motion and it has been seconded. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections to either set of minutes? Seeing none, the question is, shall both sets of minutes be adopted? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. The ayes have it, and both sets of minutes are adopted. The next item on the agenda is some of the good news that we get to do here. Uh, we have three swearings in this evening, uh, one for an officer and two for sergeants. Therefore, is there a motion to deviate for those three swearing-ins? Mr. Prana has made the motion, and it has been seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, the question is, shall the council deviate to do three swearing-ins? Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it and will deviate from the agenda for that purpose. So, I'm going to take the walking, talking microphone here. And just kind of swing around. And as I do that, Officer Jason Calvarisi, will you come forward, please? Uh, it's not often that I get to swear a brother Marine into anything, but he's not just a brother Marine, he's a brother field radio officer, 2531, 29 stumps, Ubra, absolutely. So uh, I think it's fantastic to bring a brother from the Marine Corps around. So what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to take the microphone in your left hand so that you can raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Jason Calvarisi. I, Jason Calvarisi. Having been appointed to the Office of Police Officer. Having been appointed to the Office of Police Officer. In the City of Rolling Meadows. In the City of Rolling Meadows. County of Cook. County of Cook. Do hereby solemnly promise. Do hereby solemnly promise. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And all the laws and ordinances in all the laws and ordinances of the city of rolling meadows of the city of rolling meadows and that i will perform the duties and that i will perform the duties of the office of a police officer of the office of a police officer to the best of my ability to the best of my ability congratulations officer I heard, ah, okay, mom is going to pin tonight, excellent, or put the badge on, correct? I was, I learned that last time. We get pins, they get badges. <laughs> Next up, sir. Next up, Sergeant Dan Cook, will you come forward, please? <coughs> Dan has not only been one of our investigators and more recently the officer in charge up there, but he was also <coughs> selected to be part of the major case assistance team and helping out with that work, which is, which is quite a plum assignment, I can tell you. And uh, Dan, I guess I would say, my guess is 13 or 14 years ago, was a good enough sport to take a fairly new and rather gabby alderman out on one of his first ride-alongs, uh, riding around in the dark, listening to this guy talk his ear off and ask a bunch of questions. So he's also a good sport. So Dan, uh, if you wouldn't mind, I'm gonna ask you to take this microphone in your left hand so that you can raise your right. And please repeat after me. I, Dan Cook. 
I, Dan Cook, having been appointed to the office of police sergeant, having been appointed to the office of police sergeant in the city of Rolling Meadows, in the city of Rolling Meadows, County of Cook, County of Cook, do hereby solemnly promise, do hereby solemnly promise that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and all the laws and ordinances and all the laws and ordinances of the city of Rolling Meadows of the city of Rolling Meadows and that I will perform the duties and that I will perform the duties of the office of a police sergeant of the office of a police sergeant to the best of my ability to the best of my ability congratulations sir. thank you And finally, Sergeant Tony Peluso, will you please come forward? Uh, in his time with the previous department and here, there are very few police positions that I think Tony hasn't served in. And uh, most recently, he's been uh, the president of the police union as well. Uh, and we've appreciated his leadership there. And uh, I think one of the neatest things is service on the police honor guard, that group of folks that really lends so much extra dignity and so much extra oomph to the things like the veteran ceremonies that we do and so forth and so on. And uh, I can tell you personally that when they have that whole uh, Buckingham Palace guard routine that they have to do, if you try to get him to laugh, he's not budging. He doesn't smile, he doesn't laugh. And that's either because he's very good or it just reflects the fact that I just ain't funny. And it probably could be either one. So, Tony, if you wouldn't mind, please take this microphone in your left hand so that you can raise your right. And repeat after me. I, Tony Peluso. I, Tony Peluso. Having been appointed to the office of police sergeant. Having been appointed to the office of police sergeant. In the city of Rolling Meadows. In the city of Rolling Meadows. County of Cook. County of Cook. Do hereby solemnly promise. Do hereby solemnly promise. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And all the laws and ordinances. And all the laws and ordinances. Of the City of Rolling Meadows. Of the City of Rolling Meadows. And that I will perform the duties. And that I will perform the duties. Of the office of a police sergeant. Of the office of a police sergeant. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations, Sergeant. So at this particular time, we've learned that it's a great opportunity for just a little bit of uh, extra picture taking uh, up here with the background of the seal and so forth and so on. So we traditionally say, we're just gonna pause for a few minutes here for any extra pictures uh, and for people to make their way out if they're not really interested in staying around for the world of the rest of tonight's meeting.
but would you control your council? Yes. Yeah. There's chocolate raining here. It's raining chocolate. It's better than might need to start this. banging this gavel again. <laughs> so, with the festivities <laughs> finished and uh, all the swearing in of police officers done, the council can move on to its business this evening. Uh, under reports, under the mayor's report, uh, I just have a brief update that's a fairly pleasant one. Um, you might recall that uh, during one of the previous ward reports, um, I had mentioned that uh, with the state action that they took recently to take care of their current budget as opposed to the one that's coming, uh, we had an exposure of roughly between zero and about $75,000 that we were probably going to have to eat because of their actions. Uh, we came down slightly below half of that. Uh, it should be roughly around $30,000 of uh, monies that we were expecting from the state that we've been told not to expect. And so all things considered, it's not awful. And uh, again, the Northwest Municipal Conference, as well as municipalities across the entire state under the Illinois Municipal League, as well as just about every school district and park district and everybody else is uh, working very hard to try to see what can be done about the upcoming budget. So we'll keep you informed as far as that goes. Are there word reports this evening? Mr. Prano, the second word. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, a couple of points. Uh, uh, the area of uh, Adam Street, Vermont and Williams, they've been replacing the mains there. Uh, we've had a few uh, <coughs> weeks of upheaval, but I'm told by our uh, public works director <laughs> that things will be under control shortly, so I thank him for fielding questions. Also, we had the residents from Gettysburg who have had a number of trees that have been cut down because of our emerald ash and we're working with Public Works to see what we can do about getting those up and running. So, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Further word reports? Seeing none, there are also no signatures on the sign-in sheet this evening. Therefore, the Council can proceed straight to its ordinances and resolutions. The first item there is a single ordinance that is in for second reading it is item A. This ordinance, if adopted, would amend a previously approved plan for a new parking structure at Continental Towers. The three amendments proposed would expand the structure by 11 feet on each side, allow for a fifth floor if the property chooses to move forward with creating one, and grant a variance for certain areas that cannot meet the requirement of no more than six inches of temporary standing water during a large storm. The Plan Commission considered this request and unanimously recommended its approval. Is there a motion to adopt this ordinance? Mr. Banger has made the motion and it has been seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. Mr. Prana. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I have had some inquiries and some <coughs> questions about this. Um, there will be a parking structure that will be uh, built uh, there. So the, uh, the inquiries I had is that it's a beautiful building and uh, we're totally pleased with the parking structure, but then on the other hand, when you explain to folks that the reason for the parking structure is, I believe, five or six floors of new businesses are moving into Continental Towers. So I just wanted to mention that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As long as debate has commenced, I will also point out that um, uh, through comments that were, were given to us, the city staff uh, did politely request um, more than once about maybe the possibility of moving the, the parking deck to another site that's right there on the property uh, and the property owner indicated that they appreciated uh, our bringing those concerns forward but that they would like to keep it where it is and it's their property and therefore uh, this ordinance is forward for second reading. Is there further discussion? Then seeing none, the question is uh, sh shall this ordinance be adopted? The clerk will please call the roll. Prina? Yes. Majikis? Yes. Judd? Yes. Bianger? Yes. Diestis? Yes. Cannon? Yes. With six in favor and none opposed, this ordinance is hereby declared passed. That brings us to the second item, which is the only item in for first reading this evening. It is item B. This ordinance, if adopted, would amend the staffing plan to change a position in the Community Development Department. Specifically, the position listed as Chief Building Officer and Assistant Community Development Director would revert to its previous title, Plan Review and Inspection Supervisor. Accordingly, the position will be reclassified from its current P1 level on the pay scale to revert back to its previous level of P2. Is there a motion to move this ordinance forward for second reading? Mr. Prana has made the motion and it has been seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. Prana. I know I'm going to talk in a mood tonight, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I will support this. 
but one of the comments that we have had at the council uh, is we'd like to see some more development in our community so I would like to just signal that I'd like staff to be as we're changing this but also look at what we can do in the future of uh, uh, building up the uh, community development department so thank you mr. mayor so noted further discussion seeing none the question is shall the clerk move this ordinance forward for second reading the clerk will please call the roll. The Jikes? Yes. Judd? Yes. Banger? Yes. Yes, sis? Yes. Cannon? Yes. Prana? Yes. With six in favor and none opposed, the clerk will please move this item forward for second reading. That concludes all of the ordinances that are in for this evening, therefore bringing us to the warrant. The document that releases all of the funds for the obligations of the city that were incurred from March 18th through April 7th. The amount for approval is nearly $2.4 million, roughly, <coughs> excuse me, roughly half of which is related to the payroll. This unusually large amount is in large part due to two bi-weekly payrolls falling within the same warrant. Is there a motion to approve the warrant as prepared by the Finance Department? Mr. Banger has made the motion and it has been seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, the question is, shall the warrant be approved? The clerk will please call the roll. Judd? Yes. Banger? Yes. Yes. Sis? Yes. Cannon? Yes. Crana? Yes. Majikis? Yes. With six in favor and none opposed, the warrant is approved. Quickly moving through ordinances and warrants, we come to a very long consent agenda for resolutions. It contains 13 items that run from item D through P. Would any alderman like any of these items removed from the consent agenda? Mr. Cannon? Uh, L and N. Item L and N are removed. Uh, further items to be removed from the consent agenda. Mr. Judd. Thank you, sir. J and K. J and K are removed from the consent agenda. Further items to be removed? Mr. Diestis. E. Item E is removed from the consent agenda. Further items to be removed? With five items stricken from the consent agenda, that does still leave eight. They would be items D, F, G, H, I. M, O, and P. Therefore, the chair asks unanimous consent to consider all eight of those resolutions as one motion. Is there any objection? Seeing none, it would therefore be in order to make a motion to approve all eight of those designated resolutions. Mr. Banger has made the motion and it has been seconded. The question is, shall all eight resolutions pass? Item D would approve the purchase of police tasers. Item F would award a contract for sidewalk curb and gutter maintenance. Item G would award a contract for pavement crack sealing. Item H would be the semi-annual approval of the release of closed session minutes and tapes. Item I would authorize the purchase of a fire department staff car. Item M would approve the venture agreement amendments with Northwest Central Dispatch. Item O would approve the purchase of five new replacement ruggedized laptop computers with wireless capabilities. And item P would award a contract for engineering services for the 2015 sanitary sewer and storm sewer rehabilitation program. Therefore, again, the question is, shall all eight resolutions pass? The clerk will please call the roll. Banger? Yes. Diestis? Yes. Cannon? Yes. Prana? Yes. Jikis? Yes. <coughs> yes. With six in favor and none opposed, those eight resolutions are adopted. That brings the council to item E, the first item removed. This resolution, if adopted, would approve a three-year towing contract with the city's current vendor, Hillside Towing. Four bids were received and Hillside was the low bidder. The basic tow fee in the contract will be $95 for each of the first two years and increase to $100 in 2017. <laughs> Is there a motion to adopt this resolution? Mrs. Majikas has made the motion and it has been seconded. Mr. Diastis, you ask that this item be removed. You're entitled to first comment, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> um, just two things. Uh, one, isn't there something in Springfield right now that um, would require uh, municipalities to uh, rotate these type of agreements annually? I believe that such a law has been proposed in Springfield both last year and this year. Um, what Springfield is doing with the bills we don't know yet and should know by the time they adjourn which is supposed to be May 31st but uh, word on the street says they're gonna be late this year for the first time in a while. So okay, is that a why. sufficient answer? Well I guess what happens if this passes and then Springfield passes a different law? Well, if I'm not mistaken, there is a clause already written into the agreement knowing that that could be the case. And then if that's the case, then 
the law takes effect and will not affect this contract. Is that correct? That is correct. It allows for the rotating of, um, per the chief, for additional towing groups to be allowed into this. Okay. Mr. Diaz. That's it for now. Further discussion on Ordinance D? Then seeing none, the question is, shall the, excuse me, resolution be adopted? The clerk will please call the roll. Diasis? No. Cannon? Yes. Prina? Yes. Majikis? Yes. Judd? Yes. Bianger? Yes. With five in favor and one opposed, this resolution is adopted. Uh, as we go to J, Mr. Judd, may I ask, would it be in the spirit of what you're looking to do to at least make J and K a single item together? Sure. Fair enough. The chair asks unanimous consent to consider items J and K together. Is there any objection? Seeing none, it would be in order for a motion to approve resolutions J and K. Is there such a motion? Mr. Diestis has made the motion and it has been seconded. Mr. Judd, you ask that these items be pulled. You're entitled to first comment, sir. I don't have any. Thank you. Okay, fair enough. Then I guess I better read that uh, J would approve an engineering agreement for the Gulf Road RTA sidewalk project. And uh, item K would approve the local agency agreement for the Gulf Road RTA sidewalk project. Um, these are the things that were um, mentioned back before uh, at a committee of the whole that I believe is probably almost a year ago now. And uh, this project achieved full funding. Therefore, the question is, shall both of these resolutions be adopted? The clerk will please call the roll. Being by, oh, <laughs> Cannon? Uh, yes. Prana? Yes. Majikis? Yes. Judd? No. Banger? Yes. 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 With five in favor and, excuse me, is it five in favor? Yes. yes. Five in favor and one opposed, this resolution is adopted. The next resolution would be resolution L. This resolution, if adopted, would approve a contract for engineering services for, city, for a citywide pavement condition assessment. Uh, Mr. Cannon, you asked that this item be pulled. You're entitled to first comments. I did. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, we've had a, a number of discussions about city streets this year, and we realize we'll be spending a lot of money. I think the last time we all met together and talked about the subject, we've identified $2.5 million worth of streets that we're planning to do yet this year and next year, and we probably still have some left over only in that condition. And so at this point, I think this is really premature to start reevaluating other streets already when we know we can't get to them no matter what condition they're in. And so I, at minimum, I would propose we hold off on this for a couple of years. Um, I think we know in general how bad our streets are and where they're at. I don't think this is going to bring us any new information. And to spend another $19,200, I'd rather see us pave another few feet of street. Thank you. Noted. Further discussion of this resolution? Mr. Judd. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we talked about the, at the cow about this, and, you know, I think we have about 650 a year funded. This year we had 770 because we took the 120 from each of them and put it in there, and then we you know, move 230 to make it an even million. But next year we're back to the 650. We don't have the 120, and without, you know, upsetting us and and Moody's, you know, we can't continue to do the one-offs. Um, and I think something was sent out where I, I think the motor fuel tax is going to be about a dollar twenty per capita, right? So that's 25,000 people we have here, so that's 30 k We're going to be out next year. Um, I think Alderman Cannon's, you know, dead bang on. We already know where the streets are. We know how bad they are. To pay somebody to tell us these streets are bad, that, that it's irrelevant. We we can only go, you know, right now we've only funded to 650 until we get the funding mechanism down. Whether it's 850 a million or two million, you know, we have to figure out what we're interested in putting in, and then we can figure out what we're going to do. But in, until we're going to pony up and come up with the funding, there's in my opinion, no reason to spend money, you know, finding out what streets are bad when we already know it based on the, the previous reports that we've had. So, thank you. Further discussion of the resolution? Mr. Diaz. Um, I would throw the question to staff and say, I've heard what my, my, my peers have just said. What's the rationale for doing this? Well, Mr. Crumstock, would you care to field that, or should oh. we toss it to Mr. Vogt? I'll start it, and it actually goes back into, um, at the council's direction at the committee of whole, there was a request that we solicit the proposal that's in front of you because of the future considerations of street improvements. So that's why this is in front of you, because it was a council request at a committee of whole 
to talk to our engineers to continue looking at our street conditions. So with that, if uh, Mr. Vogt has any additional information, but that's a quick answer. And the Mr. Vogt. Thank you, Mayor. To add on to that, the key is to have assistance from the engineers with regards to cost estimates. Um, the cost estimates, particularly for the streets that are of failing base, are we are seeing that the those costs are in excess of what we had previously estimated. Our intent of uh, this program is to try to provide some better information to the council with regards to current condition as well as the um, cost estimating for those streets. Thank you. Mr. Diaz, is that a sufficient answer to the question? Um, so, yeah, yes and no. Uh, so we're 19,000 and they're gonna come back and tell us the cost estimates are either high or low and give us more information on failing streets? Not exactly. Uh, okay. To clarify, it would be to provide a update for current costs on uh, street reconstruction, partial reconstruction, as well as the uh, patching and overlay. Certainly, um, if council's got concerns about the cost, we can try to segment out some of the work and just focus on the streets that are at or below a certain rating so that uh, we don't have a full report but could certainly um, segment that into um, just streets that uh, we've identified over the next five or ten years that uh, are going to be in need. What would be the downside of not spending this money at this point in time? I think that the only uh, downside would actually be is if we don't do it, we'll be opening up proposals down the line that we might make a rough estimate. It should really be at this level, but then when you do all this analysis, it's over here. We're trying to make that rough number that we're looking at for our street program closer to where <coughs> we're actually going to end up. So this sort of bridges the gap, getting us closer to that true number the best that we can with the foundation, with all the other pieces, the base and everything else. So again, it's money to utilize now to hopefully that our true bids future will come in closer to what we actually are spending out. So uh, future, future this year or future, future years? Is future future, future after this year. Because we've already done this one and that's part of when we had the community of the whole discussion that we had that we didn't have a lot of this information at this point in time. That's why the bids or the proposals, when we thought the streets would be over here because this old data was coming in over here, with this study, hopefully in future years when we go out, we'll have a number and it will come close to where that true number is so we have a better reflection of what we're actually doing. But again, until you actually get into the base and to all the other pieces, you might have some additional. But it's money now that we're spending for a better picture later. And this this money is going to get us into those bases. He's going to actually drill holes and, and do all that work, so we know. No, it's not to do field work with regards to um, holes or cores. It's simply to look at the streets based on the conditions that uh, they're in and update the study that was last compiled in 2010 to not only remove the streets that we've repaired over the last five years, but the fact that uh, a number of streets, due to the funding levels that we've committed to over a number of years, um, our list gets longer and longer in terms of streets that uh, we're spending more money on to maintain from a patching standpoint, from trying to get a handle for not only the Capital Improvements Committee's um, consideration, but the Council as a whole in terms of looking at what do we need in terms of revenues for the street program. If we don't have updated cost information, I fear that we're gonna be running into the same thing that we've done this past year is uh, finding out that the costs are higher than what we anticipated back in 2010 and trying to do our own upgrades. The streets are, in many cases, getting in worse condition and costing us more. I feel that uh, the city would be well served to have that information going forward rather than being surprised by it uh, when we get to it. Well. I think any surprise is, is a bad surprise when it comes to this, but if the engineer is just going to go out and look and not going to physically drill holes and find out, 
what's the difference from we looking and saying it needs to be fixed and him looking and saying it needs to be fixed and if he doesn't get into the base and if he doesn't do the field work he's just looking and we're just looking and we're kind of I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing I understand why but I'm not seeing how this is necessarily going to get us to where you're saying we need to get all I can respond to in answering that is to say that if we don't do this we will just have to continue the way we've been assessing our streets by um, rough estimates and then waiting until each street each year is programmed and do the core samples then I mean certainly we can go back and talk to the engineer if there's a desire to go as far as doing the core samples I think that in some cases or in many cases right now that's not really what we're looking for we're just looking for better cost estimates and um, based on street conditions and comparisons to other streets that we've been uh, working on over the years such as Elizabeth Place the last couple of years such as uh, Newport and uh, Fairfax Village streets now we already have a little bit better handle on what we've got and uh, just to compare that to the other streets that are in need that's what the proposal is for is there further discussion mr. cannon thank you mr. mayor Fred could I ask a couple questions then <coughs> refresh my memory so I'm gonna make sure we're all on the same page here when we had these discussions a couple weeks ago a couple months ago as a group we identified 2.5 million dollars worth of streets under current cost that we plan on doing this year and next year or we would like to if we could is are my numbers close I don't have the report in front of me but yes it probably is close based on what pending work uh, we have and what our recommendations are okay so <coughs> again I'm not an engineer I don't understand all these numbers exactly but I'm trying to think if we're gonna spend a million dollars this year that leaves us with a million and a half dollars worth of work that as a group we've pretty much agreed that these would be the next streets to come up next year and when after after that so we're at least two years away from ever, ever utilizing any of this information well we know we know we know what the program is this year right it's pretty much set the program is set based on what the um, bids are being advertised for yes but we I mean, have we, that street but we I mean we know streets. we've identified those streets we have them in they're kind of in process we have like what four or five different streets that are getting done right no yes. because the bids have not been opened well, okay. the, the bids are out for f five streets okay but I believe mr. Cannon's point is well taken okay that, that's all I'm just and so I mean my point is we have all this work lined up right now that we know the streets are bad and in many of these cases I know like on my our own street you already had core stuff done last last fall because we agreed to re-engineer ahead of time correct so I mean I don't think anybody would disagree with engineering ahead of time on streets next year also but I guess the other point I would make at this you know we, we have a big issue out in Ward 1 where a lot of the streets we find out now have the bad base so I guess the reverse question I would ask is you know someone from engineering approved all those streets to be re to be peeled and then reset eight seven or eight nine years ago whatever those did streets like Silent Brook you know those, those streets back there so do we have visual inspections then I mean how how did our engineers at that time miss those streets so badly that they're now crumbling literally less than 10 years later when they're supposed to have an expected life of 20 years I mean because I mean that's what they did is they did an inspection like this back probably 2005 or something right 2003 to be exact and okay. uh, Alderman Cannon those streets weren't missed we knew what the condition of those streets were the decision was made based on the amount of money that was required to spend that we limited the reconstructions in that area during that period of time to two streets Arrowwood and um, Amanda Court all the others were patched and overlaid that was a I mean, conscious effort made given the dollars that the city had and given the number of streets it needed you mean to we knew that at the time that those the under, I'm not I'm asking oh. I don't know because I wasn't around then I mean yeah. you, we realized at that point that the sub the sub stuff was bad and we still did it absolutely that the base is made of a pozzolanic material the decision was made to do the best that we could with the dollars that we had to um, patch mill and overlay those streets in the engineers had given us that recommendation wasn't their recommendation necessarily it was based on the dollars that were available to um, do the street programs then okay I guess again I would just reiterate my first point I mean we have our program set for at least two years I'm not against this program per se but I don't see any benefit of doing it right now when two years from now things might change 
Thank you. Mr. Prana, you are next. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to summarize all this. First off, Mr. Mayor, this was done, the staff did this at the direction of council. Is, am I correct in it's, that statement? It's my impression that from the March Committee of the Whole meeting, right. so when the request was made and the, the answer was given that within about 60 to 90 days, the updated information could be given, the staff considers this to be a piece of that work, correct? Okay, because the concern at that meeting was the council wanted to know what the long-term effect on some of these roads would be. Uh, Mr. Cannon brings up a point about his ward and when that was done, I wasn't on the council at that time. However, the recommendation came and the council approved what was completed on those streets. So what I'm trying to summarize is the council directed staff to do this. We've been talking about what we want to see long term and the last update has been five years. And I realize short term we can save some money at 19.2, but what will it affect this long term? And one of the things that I have brought up that I have been frustrated with at the council is that, you know, trying to get the information together so we can start the bidding in January and February and March and move forward with it. So I would support this because the council gave direction to staff to do this and it's part of the long-term solution that we're looking for as a city. Further discussion in the resolution. The only thoughts that I would have to offer is, uh, as the discussion has gone on, I think it's, uh, I think it's far too early to be making conjectures about how next year is going to be funded. Um, we haven't even started talking about next year, and I believe that uh, there are a number of different avenues that will allow us to be able to hit the mark that we want to hit. And so, um, if it's a there's not even enough uh, at the moment, um, I, I regrettably disagree. I think that discussion has barely begun. Is there further discussion in this resolution? And seeing none, the question is, shall the resolution be adopted? The clerk will please call the roll. Cannon? No. Prana? Yes. Majikis? Yes. Judd? No. Banger? No. Diestis? Yes. With three in favor and three opposed, that is a tie vote. The chair's vote is aye. Therefore, this resolution is adopted. The next item on the agenda is item N. You'll pardon me for one moment. Oh. That's not a breakable tie, Mr. McCall. <coughs> if it is not a breakable tie on the advice of the city attorney, then therefore the vote reverts back to three to three and lacking a majority, mm -hmm. it fails. Thank you for the uh, reminder. I, I brought them. Thank you. Uh, that brings us to item N. This resolution, if adopted, would approve a contract with TRIA Architecture of Burr Ridge, Illinois to provide a comprehensive assessment of the physical condition of the old public works building. The amount of the contract is nearly $14,000 and the funds will be paid from the building and land fund. Is there a motion to adopt this resolution? Mr. Diastas has made the motion and it has been seconded. Is there any discussion? Uh, Mr. Cannon, you asked that this be pulled. You're entitled to first comment, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <coughs> in December 1st, 2010, our council had, a, had uh, asked the, a report to be done in that building. And to my knowledge, most of the things that were talked about in this report that needed to be repaired have not been repaired. In fairness to Public Works, they've done everything they possibly could to kind of keep that thing together down there. Um, until we come to the conclusion as to what we want to do and make a firm decision, I don't see spending an almost $14,000 to review a building that almost everybody at this table would agree is, is, is a troubled building at minimum. I don't think another report's gonna give us any more information than what we need to decide that the building's crumbling and needs to be replaced. Uh, th this is my opinion, I understand, but I, I just can't see spending uh, $13,000 in this 138 and, and uh, get information that we already know. Anybody that walks down there doesn't have to be in the building industry to realize that the building is in bad, bad shape and only getting worse. And most of the things that we did in this report that was authorized by the by the, the city council, we haven't even done most of those things. So I, I just don't understand why we would even want to spend any more money. We, we all know it's a bad thing, so I'm, I'm totally against this. Thank you. 
Further discussion in the resolution? Mr. Banjan. Thank you. I agree with Alderman Cannon. I think if we spend more money on this, it's, it is the epitome of throwing good money after bad, and so I won't support it either. Thank you. Mrs. Majekis. Thank you, Mayor. Um, then I have, a, I have a question. We don't spend money on this. If, if my recollection is correct, at a Cal meeting months ago, probably last summer maybe even, I don't know. Um, we had talked about putting some money into this building to kind of, I hate to say band-aid it, but to do some work over there to, you know, didn't we agree to that? And that work we talked about doing the minimal that we could do right now to give us a few years on the, I think it was like a five-year plan or something like that. Oh, sorry, like a five-year plan or something like that we had talked about. Mr. Vogt. Does that sound familiar? That's generally my recollection. Excuse me. It's generally my recollection, and um, I believe that's one of the reasons why there are funds in the budget this year to it's a do what is being recommended over a multi-year uh, period. So this then having this done would help us to determine what we're going to do that we budgeted for this year on that building. Correct, as well as to give us updated uh, information <coughs> from the 2010 assessment that was done most recently. Um, to assist in that decision making in terms of what work needs to be done or what should be done and what priority. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? Mr. Cannon. Can I ask Mr. Vogt some questions, Mr. Sorry. Certainly. Fred, could you just give me a general idea? I think you guys have already done an admirable job keeping, trying to keep that building going. Out of all, most of the things that are reported in this report, in, in your opinion, uh, about how much of that work has been accomplished to bring this, to do, to fix the things that they talked about in this report? Virtually nothing on the roofs or on the masonry other than the most urgent of needs if we've had leaks to respond to, okay. but no major work. So I mean, I, I don't understand why we would want to spend more money when we haven't even done the work that we requested five years ago to get done. We haven't even done that work yet. So why would we want to report to even get more further work to have done when we don't have that much money budgeted for it? Yes, we have some money budgeted this year and we have that, we're trying to get that $125,000 grant to repair the roof not to fix the roof, to repair part of it. I, I just don't understand why we want to keep on spending money like this. We know it's bad building. We haven't done the things that we know that needed to be done. It's just a waste of 13.8. Thanks. Well, I believe since that was phrased in the form of a question, to, to do fairness to the staff, there are any number of things that can change over the course of five years. And working off a five-year-old document when maybe something else uh, has come into play, it doesn't even need to be a worse thing than anything that's in that report. It can be anything that changes the sequence in which the work should be done. Um, I'm not a construction guy either, but I know enough to know that the sequence of work is remarkably important. And I think in, in respect to the staff, they've prepared this, I'm, I'm assuming, Figuring that five years is quite a long time and that if the sequence has work the sequence of work has changed We might be spending money doing stuff that's out of sequence Find out later that because it was out of sequence it created bigger problems and may end up spending more money I I believe that in fairness to the people who present these documents for us. They don't do things with with no reason Those are my thoughts Mr. Prane um. I do agree with Mr. Cannon. I don't want to spend more money on this building. However, in reflecting on what the mayor has just uh, said, I know that we're not going to replace this building tomorrow or this year or next year because with our discussions that we had earlier, we the direction that we were giving from council, and Mr. Mayor, correct me if I'm wrong, is that we wanted to keep this going for two or three or, or four years. We knew it was not going to be a permanent fix, but we wanted to keep it a viable building. So I think that's the purpose for this document. And the fact is that, yes, there's probably things that we may have changed that we don't want to fix. And there are things that probably need to be fixed so that we can just keep it going. Because I, we have a number of things coming before this council. And since we don't have the money to replace this building in the next year two or three years as was the discussion of council I would vote to approve this tonight further discussion mrs. Majekis thank you um, 
so if this didn't pass, I guess I, I don't know who I'm asking this to, if Mr. Roy, or if you, <laughs> so whoever wants to answer. Um, if uh, this didn't pass, uh, what then would, how would we proceed on that building? We just pick what we think is the worst thing to fix? With the report as the yep. most recent information we have, correct? Yep. Well, given the pending grant application through the county, until we learn if we are successful in getting monies and how much, I would likely recommend sitting tight and not doing anything with it. But uh, once we, if we do learn that we have some grant money and opportunity to prioritize the roofing, um, initially our thoughts were, well, it's kind of obvious you start at the top and work down, you fix the roof and all the leakage to save the others. Uh, in discussions over several months informally with some architects, so that may not necessarily be the wisest thing to do. There may be some masonry work and wall work that uh, needs to be done either in conjunction with the roof uh, repairs or depending on how much roof we repair. And that's one of the reasons why we uh, pursued the um, proposals to get um, to get this work done now in advance of um, finding that out. We certainly can wait, but uh, if we do get grant money for the roof, I'd be coming back uh, at some later date, uh, probably towards the end of this year, to do the same task. Okay, thank you. Mr. DeEstes. So, Mr. Vogt, would it, would, it, um, would it make sense then to just postpone this until we find out if we get the grant money? And then once we get the grant money, bring this back uh, up for a vote because what you're saying makes a lot of sense. Um, but if we don't get the grant money, then there's almost not as urgent a need for this report and we can work off the other report. But if we do get the grant money, then it becomes um, a timely thing to, to, to do this at that point. Other than for the structural concerns of the building, I would say, Yes, it certainly could wait, and it certainly could wait even with that unless something develops or becomes um, troubling or something that needs immediate repairs that uh, we would want to architect's assistance. We don't have architects on staff, and that's why we rely on consultants to do this kind of work and, uh, you know, not only in terms of the scheduling, but uh, to advise us of what work needs to be done or how bad something is or how bad something isn't uh, with regards to the uh, components of the building. So then, Mr. Mayor, I guess having heard that, could, would a, a motion to the table or a motion to postpone be in order at this point? Well, unfortunately, I believe neither would. Okay. Um, I, I believe, first of all, um, tabling is not an appropriate motion under these circumstances. And a motion to postpone, if we were going to go to the next council meeting and arguably the meeting after that, that's about the extent okay. that we can push something out because it should be postponed to a certain time. I believe if if that was somebody's desire and there's not a motion to get that done tonight, um, somebody just needs to be in a position to move to reconsider um, later on down the road. Further discussion? Then seeing no further discussion, the question is, shall the resolution be adopted? The clerk will please call the roll. Karina? Yes. Jikus? Yes. Judd? No. Banger? No. Diestis? No. Cannon? No. With two in favor and four opposed, this resolution fails. That concludes the resolution portion of this evening. And now I've got to scroll, scroll, scroll to get to the proclamations portion. <coughs> Just one moment, please. Thank you. Uh, under proclamations, there is an annual proclamation that we do here because uh, we participate in this usually uh, in some form or another through our public works department and through uh, our, our environmental subcommittee of the Urban Affairs Committee. And so um, among the noteworthy whereas clauses uh, in this particular uh, resolution this year, uh, this is actually 143 years that in some way, shape, or form, consistently, the United States of, Re uh, the United States of America has been recognizing this Arbor Day uh, that we set up as a way to try to um, bring the trees back to the original places that were cutting them down to make these newfangled things called cities. And so uh, I think everybody who lives in a city today appreciates uh, the plantings wherever we can get them. 
And so, therefore, I, Tom Rooney, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Rolling Meadows, Illinois, do hereby proclaim Friday, April 24th, 2015, as Arbor Day in the city of Rolling Meadows. That is the only proclamation in this evening, and there are no appointments, um, but uh, I just give the council forewarning that uh, the next meeting will be the appointment palooza that we do uh, once a year with all of the different terms uh, expiring for the different commissions. Um, and we throw the library board in as well, even though theirs don't technically expire until June. And so uh, there will be a, a whole slew of annual appointments at the next meeting. Does the city clerk have a report? The election is over. I congratulate all the winners. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that report. <laughs> Thank you uh, under city staff reports, we start with Mr. Crumpstock and the community items of interest. I actually have uh, six items that I want to mention. Um, just a friendly <laughs> reminder that we do say is that yard waste collection and street sweeping has commenced throughout the uh, city. If you have additional questions about how something should be out at the curb or how it should be cut, please contact Public Works at 847-963-0500 or visit the city webpage. Obviously, is what was just mentioned in the proclamation, um, Earth Day activities are set for April 25th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. For additional information, please contact the Public Works again. They'll give you more about what they're doing this year and more events that are out there. We do do some of our um, Earth Day events and Arbor Day events and some other items with schools, but the main event that we have for Earth Day activities deals with the creek, and that's, again, April 25th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Then we have May 16th that's coming up. That Saturday, we have the Pancake Breakfast that goes from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m., and obviously the fire department will be doing the cooking again, and that is through the Golden Years Council. The location is Park Central at 3000 Central Road. The cost, if purchased in advance, is $5 for adults and $4 for children under the age of 12. If you do walk-ins, it's $6 for an adult, $5 for the children under 12. And again, that's from 8 to 11, but starting at 9 a.m. and going to 2 p.m., the Garden Club Hometown Plant and Craft Sale will also be at that point. You have to walk from one building to the next building, and that one's 3200 Central Road. Um, and again, at the uh, Public Works building, you can see all kinds of vegetation, other kinds of crafts, other kinds of plants, other things that you would like to know about. But also, as you walk from Park Central over to the Public Works building, you walk right by the Historical Museum, and that's 3100 Central Road. They will also be doing their annual open house on that day, and again, that's Saturday, May 16th. They're going to be doing it at the same time as the uh, Garden Club, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then the final one that we do around this time is a reminder that the April Electronic News and Views, or what we call our e-news and views, is actually on our website. So with that, those are the six items of interest that we have for this meeting. Then next would be purchase orders over $2,500, also Mr. Crumpstock? There's actually two of them that were on the list, and both of them deal with public works. So nothing really extraordinary. Then the third item under staff reports is the 60th anniversary update. Ms. Cizak. Thank you, Mayor Rooney. Oops, sorry. Uh, a dinner will be held to honor area veterans on Friday evening, May 22nd. Please call City Hall to reserve your tickets if you would like to attend. The annual Memorial Day Parade will take place on Saturday, May 23rd at 11 a.m. starting at the downtown fire station on Meadow Drive. At the end of the parade, a, a memorial ceremony will take place at 1130 at the Carillon Tower on Kirchhoff. Join the city to honor our loyal veterans and to celebrate community pride. On that same day, May 23rd, will be our first farmers and food trucks of the season. New food trucks, more vendors, more kid activities, and raffles will be featured at the City Hall parking lot from 10 to 2, once again that Saturday on May 23rd. Next, the City and Park District will pair up to delight ice cream lovers of all ages. Join us for a family-friendly event on Saturday, May 30th from 1 to 2 p.m. at the Community Center Playground. There will be activities and treats for the kids, including a balloon twister, face painting, etc. We hope to see you there. Friday evenings are busy here in downtown Rolling Meadows with the weekly cruise night. This year, the City will join in the fun on Friday, June 19th, with the farmers and food trucks at the community church's parking lot. 
Kirchhoff will be blocked off between the two churches, resulting in a street party from 4 to 8 p.m. with food trucks, farmers, market vendors, law enforcement vehicles, music, and many fun family activities. The next week, a new outdoor event will take place this year near the creek at Kimball Hill Park. On Friday evening, June 26th, the Rolling Meadows Chamber of Commerce and the city will host Wind Down by the Creek. From 5.30 to 11.30 p.m., this event will feature two bands, food trucks, plus wine and beer from local sources. So bring your lawn chair, get a babysitter, and join us for an evening of music in our beautiful park. Other events for the 2000 year tentatively include our annual July 4th parade and fireworks, a family tailgating party on Saturday, July 18th at the Community Center parking lot, and of course the annual tree lighting on Thursday, December 3rd, spiced up with fireworks and a spaghetti dinner at the firehouse. Stay in touch with the city website and the community news and views for more updates on 60th events throughout the year. Thank you. Then that leaves one more staff report, uh, the Committee of the Whole Agenda for next week. Mr. Crumstock. Currently we have uh, five items that are being worked, in, uh, worked on. Uh, the first one is elected officials training. Uh, City Attorney Jim McCall will be doing a PowerPoint and presentation and I just want to see his reaction on that one. But <laughs> every two years we do do the elected officials uh, <laughs> training and everything like that. They, we do have to go through that with everything else. He does give you a guide to read, so you know he has to work on that. Um, we do have a car lot discussion that was from a past committee of the whole discussion that we were talking about an old ordinance and bringing that back. Update on COLA's um, employee advisory committee discussion and then a fire department resource sharing update um, for the city council. So Mr. Krumstock, I'm, I'm just curious, are you just kidding Mr. McCall about a PowerPoint or are you kidding him about doing it? Because I know that Tom Bastian has usually been our representative for this. I've been trying to get him to do a PowerPoint. You know, we got this new system and a few slides. And I think it's a recall. I think this calls for a speech. <laughs> <laughs> I think with the pained look on Mr. McCall's <laughs> face, maybe we'll just let him off the hook. And uh, Mr. McCall, will you be doing the presentation this year? I'd be happy to do the presentation <laughs> without the PowerPoint. <laughs> we can tell you're thrilled. All right. What, you first or what? <laughs> Then with that being the report of the agenda, is there anything on the agenda? All right, then matters not on the agenda this evening. Are there any matters not on the agenda? Mr. Cannon. Uh, I'd just like to make a quick uh, shout out to, uh, uh, you know, Barry Crumstock has led Lori and a lot of the other staff to do some nice things for us coming up in this year. And I think I'd like to just point out Lori has been killing herself doing some really nice things. I think we really got some exciting social events this year for the first time in a really long time. I know a lot of the other staff have helped and people are realizing that it's going to be a great year. And thanks for all your extra efforts. Here, here. Further matters not on the agenda. Seeing none, there is a request to go into closed session this evening to discuss an item of personnel that falls under subsection C1 of the Illinois Open Meetings Act. It does require a formal motion and a roll call vote. Is there a motion to go into closed session to discuss so one personnel item? Mr. Banger has made the motion and it has been seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, the question is, shall the council enter closed session? The clerk will please call the roll. Majikis? Yes. Judd? Yes. Banger? Yes. Diestis? No. Cannon? Yes. Prina? Yes. What a no. what a With five in favor and one opposed, the council will enter closed session. Members of the audience and of the press are advised that we do not expect to take any action upon returning to open session. I tried. <laughs> oh, you did. Yeah.